Hello to everyone. I would like to welcome you all to today's lecture. I am sure you would have had the opportunity to go through the last class. We will briefly have a recap of the last lecture. The one that we uh, looked at last time was oxidations at unfunctionalized carbons, uh, essentially Barton and related reactions. So in the Barton reaction what we did was to convert an alcohol to uh, a gamma functionalized uh, product such as uh, having a nitroso group or an oxime group at the gamma carbon and which was led to different kinds of products uh, by reacting the oxime and the hydroxy group. The way it went around was uh, when we treated the alcohol with the nitrosyl chloride uh, in the presence of uh, pyridine, it gave the nitrite ester, which upon photolysis gave the alkoxy radical and via 6 member transition state gave the corresponding radical, which was trapped by the nitrosyl radical. At the same time, uh, we also looked at the generation of alkoxy radicals uh, via hypohalides by photolysis. So if we have an appropriately uh, substituted hypochlorite for example here that can go via the same alkoxy radical as we discussed above and go to the corresponding chloro compound where the chlorine is at the, at the delta position this is alpha, beta, gamma and delta and then that leads to the uh, cyclization to form the corresponding tetrahydrofuran. Now, uh, we can also generate a similar type of alkoxy radicals using um, hypoiodides uh, which can uh, be readily generated from the alcohols upon reaction with uh, iodine in the presence of uh, lead tetraacetate, mercuric oxide or iodobenzene diacetate eventually go via the um, corresponding uh, similar type of alkoxy radicals and finally giving the iodo compound that can be cyclized to form the tetrahydrofuran unit like this. So basically you have uh, 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5th carbon and the 6th uh, hydrogen and that is why we got a 6 member transition state which gave the corresponding iodo compound and that was cyclized to give this tetrahydrofuran. In a similar fashion if we um, take the pinane derivative, the pinane derivative there uh, the methyl group and the hydroxy group are close to each other and can form a 6 member transition state. They lead eventually to this tetrahydrofuran part via this uh, hydroxy iodide. So uh, such uh, hypohalides can also be utilized. Uh, not only nitrite esters but hypohalides and hypohalide chlorides also. We also looked at uh, the specific uh, deprotection of a benzyl ether. An example we took was uh, something like this which uh, uh, has 4 different types of benzyl groups and the one which was uh, closest to the hydroxy group was uh, debenzylated via the hypoiodide. So if we take the hydroxy group and react with N-clinamide in the presence of uh, you know, photolytic uh, condition, then we generate via the uh, hypoiodide the corresponding alkoxy radical which then uh, picks up the hydrogen from here and forming this uh, radical which is benzylic radical uh, as well as it is next to the oxygen and then this uh, cyclization here. Uh, eventually leads to the corresponding acetal. Now this acetal can be hydrolyzed under acidic conditions and can lead to the uh, corresponding diol which is basically nothing but the deprotected uh, molecule 
in which one of the benzyl groups which is closest to the hydroxy group is deprotected. So, this is a very a beautiful example of application of this uh, hypoiodite based uh, uh, chemistry uh, which is similar to the Barton reaction. Uh, beta cleavage is also now uh, known under these conditions. Uh, for example, if one takes uh, a molecule like this which is uh, essentially a uh, hemiacetal because uh, it would be a corresponding ketone and the hydroxy group will be coming from here. But then under uh, it can also exist like an hemiacetal and when this is allowed to react uh, in the presence of iodine and uh, uh, this uh, benzene iododiacetate in cyclohexane at 40 degrees under photolytic conditions what happens is uh, this hypoiodite uh, goes to the corresponding alkoxy radical which then cleaves the way it is shown here eventually leading to the formation of the corresponding lactone in which there is a loss of uh, tributyl tin radical. Now, this tributyl tin radical once it goes off we generate the corresponding double bond here. This double bond is coming from this part of the molecule. So, this is an application of uh, a beta cleavage and uh, if the beta cleavage uh, leads to a carbon radical which is situated alpha to an oxygen or a nitrogen, then an oxonium ion if it is uh, next to an oxygen or an imenium ion if it is next to the nitrogen can form and that can get trapped by a different nucleophiles. So, one example is here which is a sugar based uh, uh, nitrogen containing molecule in which there is a hydroxy group at the anomeric carbon which uh, is reacted with iodine in the presence of uh, an oxidant this in this case it is uh, iodoso benzene and that allows to form the corresponding alkoxy radical this is the alkoxy radical which can form via the corresponding uh, uh, hypoiodite and then that undergoes uh, a cleavage from here like this uh, where you generate a radical here and next to the oxygen and in the process you generate this formate. That means this particular part has become aldehydic part and that has become a formate. Now we have generated a radical which is alpha to the methoxy which then gets oxidized under the uh, conditions and forms this oxonium ion. This oxonium ion then gets trapped by the uh, nitrogen lone pair of electrons in this fashion and forms the corresponding 6 member nitrogen containing molecule with the uh, formate group being at this junction this particular formate group which is here. Now, this can be hydrolyzed uh, under basic conditions or under reductive conditions and uh, we can release the corresponding uh, this uh, protection on the nitrogen and also this uh, formate can be hydrolyzed or reduced to the corresponding hydroxy group. So, this is an example of uh, a uh, beta cleavage uh, followed by the trapping of the generated oxonium ion to form a pipiridine analog which is a, a basically glycosidase inhibitor. Now I would like to move on to uh, something different which is um, something that we discussed earlier uh, where specific conversion of alcohols to aldehydes was carried out without over oxidation to the corresponding carboxylic acid. I have an intention today to uh, introduce another relatively cheaper and, and a good reagent which is uh, useful at large scale. So, the first one that we did uh, these are the examples that we already discussed is using this TPAP that is tetra n propyl ammonium perruthinate that led to the conversion of this uh, 
primary uh, hydroxy group to the corresponding aldehyde. We also did the reaction of uh, primary alcohols uh, as sensitive as this in which there is a cyclopropane ring with IBX which also led to the corresponding aldehyde without disturbing the stereochemistry or the, the cyclopropane ring. In a similar fashion when a molecule uh, as sensitive as this which has a double bond which has a sugar path which has a cyclopropane and of course there is a tritial protection. When this tritial protection is uh, removed uh, under acidic conditions using methanol and paratoline sulfonic acid we generate the corresponding primary alcohol which was then uh, oxidized using desmartin paradine and oxidation which gave the extremely sensitive uh, uh, molecule to the acids that means this particular molecule is very sensitive to the acid. So these are the three methods that we had introduced earlier. Now I would like to introduce another alternative which is uh, uh, using tempo this is tempo which is basically tetramethyl piperidine nitroxyl in the presence of sodium hypochlorite and potassium bromide. Now the solvent that is used is dichloromethane and water. So a molecule like this in which there is an asymmetric center here which is prone to epimerization that gets converted to the corresponding aldehyde where this proton is this particular center or this proton is highly susceptible for epimerization. The way reaction occurs is the tempo gets oxidized with sodium hypochlorite to the corresponding this nitrosonium ion where X is uh, to start with is a chloride coming from sodium hypochlorite but then potassium bromide is used uh, so that the corresponding salt the bromide salt is soluble in organic solvent. Then this is reacted or this reacts with the alcohol essentially uh, in this fashion that the uh, lone pair of electrons from the oxygen attacks on the nitrogen and we get this particular intermediate. This intermediate is now suited to undergo oxidation in this fashion to the corresponding aldehyde and the release of the corresponding n-hydroxy piperidine and the corresponding aldehyde. This one here is reoxidized with sodium hypochlorite to go to the corresponding nitrosonium salt which is what is actually the oxidant that allows the alcohol to react and to form the aldehyde. Now this was one of the alternatives which can be used on a large scale and is cheap because sodium hypochlorite is cheap and the tempo that is used is only 1 mole percent. So it is a very nice method and does not allow any over oxidation to take place. Now when there is a need to convert aldehyde to the corresponding acid there are many methods but then there should also be some simpler methods uh, and in this uh, regard the pinic oxidation is uh, considered to be an interesting and useful oxidizing agent uh, where sodium chloride is used uh, in, a, in a buffer like this and uh, in the solvent like tertiary butanol. So aldehyde is converted to the corresponding acid without any problem. In this, uh, uh, this particular uh, 2 methyl uh, 2 butene is used as acid uh, scavenger uh, which is uh, basically to take care of the hypochlorous acid that is formed in the reaction. So sodium chloride reacts with this uh, buffer to form this uh, uh, particular molecule H HClO2 and uh, that reacts with the aldehyde uh, in such a way that the uh, protonation takes place by the release of this particular part of the 
oxidizing agent that attacks onto the oxonium ion to form this intermediate which then undergoes the oxidation to uh, basically uh, form HOCl and corresponding carboxylic acid. This is called pinic oxidation and has proved to be both tolerant of sensitive functionalities and also capable of reacting with sterically hindered groups because it is a very sterically unhindered reagent and therefore the oxidation occurs readily. Now what happens to this particular part this uh, hypochlorous acid that reacts with the 2 methyl 2 butene where addition occurs and this is what the chlorohydrin is formed. Now uh, we can uh, see the application of it to an interesting and relatively complicated molecule such as this where the epoxy uh, aldehyde is oxidized to the corresponding epoxy acid under these conditions. The difference that you can see from the top is the use of hydrogen peroxide as an acid scavenger. Now what happens to the hypochlorous acid that is released uh, reacts it with hydrogen peroxide to liberate hydrochloric acid water and oxygen of course and that goes off the reaction medium. So this is what the pinic oxidation is and that allows the conversion of aldehyde to the acid. Now we will move on to another um, interesting oxidizing agent which is based on microorganism. For example, this Pseudomonas putida uh, is uh, a gram negative uh, rod shaped uh, septotrophic soil bacterium and it is found in most soil and water habitats where there is oxygen. It also grows optimally at uh, 25 to 30 degrees and can be easily isolated. Now Pseudomonas petita has several strains including the KT2440 a strain that colonizes the plant roots in which there is a mutual relationship between the plant and bacteria. However, we are more concerned about this particular mutant which is mutant 39 oblique D leads to uh, dihydroxylations and it is interesting to see that such dihydroxylations do not happen on uh, any olefin such as this it does not happen this does not react but it reacts with uh, aromatic molecules such as benzene for example. If the benzene is reacted it leads to the corresponding dihydroxy compound and that too it leads to cis dihydroxylation. This is an interesting uh, method uh, to uh, basically convert uh, benzene or substituted benzenes into the corresponding cis 1, 2 diol. Now this is what it is. Now we can take X as hydrogen, we can take X as halogen, we can X take X as alkyl also. Now if X is hydrogen as I showed you before is this is what is uh, led, uh, formed. Now this obviously is uh, having a symmetry. Uh, therefore, this is not a optically active molecule, but if we start with say chlorobenzene then the corresponding um, molecule the diol that is formed is optically active. In a similar fashion we can start with the uh, corresponding bromobenzene and get to this uh, bromine substituted 1 to diol which is also optically active. Now this particular uh, molecule has been converted to uh, this very interesting uh, cyclohexane uh, molecule cyclo highly substituted cyclohexane molecule and uh, chlorobenzene has eventually been converted to this optically active lactone and uh, this bromobenzene has been converted to the corresponding 6 membered aziridine type of molecule which is also optically active. So I would like to briefly discuss the synthesis how they have done it. For example, this particular type of uh, 
molecule which has a plane of symmetry and has been uh, procured from benzene by pseudomonas potida based oxidation has been converted into plus conduritol F which is a naturally occurring potent glycosidase inhibitor and its uh, mirror image which is minus conduritol F. What has been done is to protect these two hydroxy groups in the form of the corresponding carbonate by reacting with dimethyl carbonate uh, with uh, sodium methoxide in methanol and once this uh, uh, carbonate uh, is formed which also is having a plane of symmetry uh, is then epoxidized with metachlorpyrbenzoic acid. Now both the double bonds are equally reactive and are indistinguishable because there is a plane of symmetry. So if the above double bond undergoes epoxidation then one would expect to get a epoxide of this type here. Now this is because the carbon oxygen bond here is beta oriented and therefore the epoxidation would occur from the alpha side. Now once this epoxide is formed which is a vinyl epoxide under acidic conditions like chloroboric acid we can protonate this epoxide first and then that would make this particular carbon oxygen bond relatively weaker for the nucleophiles such as this uh, hydroxy uh, molecule to attack onto this carbon atom preferentially over this particular carbon atom because this carbon atom would make uh, upon protonation slightly delta positive here because this is the allylic position and therefore the nucleophile attacks onto this carbon atom in an SN2 fashion leading to this type of uh, hydroxy molecule. Now this hydroxy molecule in which here the nucleophile has attacked from the beta side because the epoxide was alpha oriented and thus the cleavage of this particular uh, benzylic ether part with sodium liquid ammonia can release the hydroxy group in this uh, beta oriented fashion. And since this particular molecule here is optically pure, therefore this particular molecule is also optically pure. And when we carry out the basic hydrolysis of this carbonate, then these two hydroxy groups are released having the beta orientation here. Now this translates uh, to the formation of the, the stereochemistry of the four contiguous hydroxy groups uh, similar to the naturally occurring plus conduritol F. Now if we allow the epoxidation to take place on the lower double bond then we would expect to get this particular type of uh, vinyl epoxide. Now since this carbon oxygen bond is beta oriented and therefore the stereochemistry of the epoxide is all now alpha oriented. We can write the same molecule in this particular fashion by lifting the molecule out of the plane and rotating it vertically at 180 degrees and such a fashion that the epoxide part goes on the top and the double bond part comes at the bottom and in this fashion the alpha oriented epoxide now would be beta oriented and the carbon oxygen bonds which are here beta oriented would now become alpha oriented. Now this particular vinyl epoxide and this vinyl epoxide are now more or less uh, comparable with each other in terms of the orientation of the uh, uh, functional groups on the molecule except that the stereochemistry of the epoxide and this particular carbon oxygen bonds are exactly opposite to this particular uh, stereochemistry of this vinyl epoxide. Now as we have opened uh, this epoxide with uh, this hydroxy compound under acidic conditions in a similar fashion we can also open this vinyl epoxide in exactly same fashion and get to this particular molecule and since this beta uh, epoxide is beta oriented so the nucleophile attacks from the alpha side here and uh, the um, 
the corresponding hydroxy uh, compound uh, is having uh, the orientation in an alpha fashion here and this epoxide is beta oriented and therefore the the corresponding hydroxy group here is beta oriented and the same way here it is also beta oriented and now the carbonate part can be uh, hydrolyzed under basic conditions and then release the corresponding diol which is uh, now alpha oriented and now if one can see carefully then these two molecules are mirror images of each other so this is how uh, Steve Lay reported the synthesis of uh, uh, these two molecules which are important glycosidase inhibitors starting from uh, a molecule of this type which is having a plane of symmetry. Now we can also uh, have uh, the conversion of the uh, diol coming from the chlorobenzene which is optically active. Now we do not have now to worry about uh, optical activity because it is not a symmetrical molecule and this was protected as a corresponding acetonide by using um, this um, dimethoxypropane in the acidic conditions. Once uh, it is formed it was cleaved uh, by uh, ozonolysis as you can see and it can form the uh, corresponding uh, aldehydo uh, acid this is how it is going to form and that would exist as in equilibrium with the like this which is what is shown here. So basically it is nothing but a aldehyde and acid in the same molecule. When this is treated with diazomethane, the diazomethane reacts with the acid part to form the corresponding methyl ester and when this methyl ester is reacted with the vinyl magnesium bromide, the vinyl magnesium bromide attacks on to aldehyde and the uh, negative charge which is uh, generated here this will be magnesium bromide. When this reacts with the aldehyde, aldehyde will be more reactive than the ester for nucleophilic reactions. Therefore, once the nucleophile reacts the um, the anion which is generated reacts further with the corresponding ester the anion which is formed here will go and react with the ester and this will go off to form the lactone in which the vinyl group comes here as a vinyl substituent. This can of course be cleaved to the corresponding aldehyde and reduced to form the corresponding uh, primary alcohol. So this is one uh, another application of chlorobenzene based uh, optically active diol to be converted to the corresponding lactone which is optically active. So uh, finally this type of uh, chiral uh, diol derived from bromobenzene uh, was converted into a very interesting azeridine molecule of this type. Now what was done was first to protect this diol as an acetonide followed by its reaction with this particular reagent which is PHI double bond NTS in the presence of copper acetyl acetonate and followed by tributyl tin hydride mediated debromination. So what happens first is this double bond gets uh, converted into the corresponding aziridine because this particular double bond is sterically more hindered because of the bromine and therefore preferentially this double bond is converted to the corresponding aziridine and then under radical conditions this carbon bromine bond is cleaved to form this particular 
carbon hydrogen bond here there is a hydrogen here so this is a very straightforward synthesis involving three steps protection followed by aziridine formation followed by debromination but there is also a classical way of doing it and that is first you take this particular acetonide uh, molecule and open it uh, by using n bromosuccinamide uh, in dimethoxyethane and water in such a way that the uh, first the bromination would occur from the alpha side because this carbon oxygen bond is beta oriented and that particular uh, bromonium ion will then open by water at this particular position here because that is the allylic position and therefore what one would get is the corresponding uh, bromohydrine of this kind where the water has attacked onto this carbon and bromine has come at this particular carbon atom and the orientation of the bromine is dictated by the orientation of this carbon oxygen bond which is beta. Now this bromohydrine under conditions in which sodium azide and DMSO is utilized first uh, forms uh, an epoxide because under these conditions the hydroxy groups interact with uh, this particular carbon atom here and bromine uh, goes as a leaving group forming this particular type of uh, beta epoxide here and this beta epoxide then is opened by the nucleophile that is azide ion at this particular carbon atom again because this is the carbon atom which is the allylic carbon of the epoxide and therefore preferentially this is attacked by the azide and since this carbon oxygen bond of the epoxide is beta oriented therefore the azide attacks from the alpha side and one gets this azido alcohol of this kind here and now if we convert this hydroxy group into a mesylate and uh, then we reduce the azide into the corresponding amine then this azide will get converted to the corresponding amine and this of course would be in the form of O mesylate and this O mesylate is a leaving group and therefore intramolecularly the amine will react with uh, the corresponding uh, carbon mesylate bond and forming the corresponding uh, aziridine from the alpha side that is because this is alpha oriented. Now once that has happened then of course we can do the end tosylation using tosyl chloride triethylamine to convert this NH into the corresponding end tosylate and of course under the radical conditions we can do the debromination or reduction of the carbon bromine bond to, to get to this uh, uh, debrominated molecule the same molecule which we had got this although this is a little bit a longer route but this can also be achieved both these routes have been uh, published in these two papers and they are very interesting uh, conversions starting from bromobenzene to optically pure uh, this particular uh, aziridine which is an important synthon in organic synthesis so we would stop it here and uh, we will continue uh, the next turn um, perhaps uh, going to the reduction part of organic chemistry based reactions. Take care and thank you, bye.